How's it going guys? It is 2.41 a.m. the 11th of December here in Japan and we have a medium difficulty question for both step one as well as 2CK internal medicine. We'll just hop through the high yield points, not waste our time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 55-year-old woman, two-month history of dizziness and headache. Physical exam shows mild splenomegaly. Vitals are within normal limits. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin elevated 20 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5 in non-menstruating women and men, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. MCV 85, that's normal, should be 80 to 100. White blood cells elevated 17,000, should be 4 to 11,000 per microliter. Red cell distribution with increase. I'll talk about this as we move to the question. Pulse oximetry 94%. This is slightly low, okay, so obviously should be as close to 100% as possible. If a patient is 93% or lower on room air, he or she should be in hospital, okay? So question's asking what's most likely to be decreased in this patient. So let's just whip through the answer choice here. Choice A, erythropoietin, is the correct answer. So the diagnosis is polysthemia vera. This is a JAK2 mutation, primary bone marrow production of hematopoietic stem cells leading to increased RBCs as well as WBCs and or platelets, okay? So they'll always give you an increase in RBCs. And then sometimes white blood cells will be elevated. They could have given us a normal. I could have written a normal white blood cell count here and then elevated platelets instead, okay? Platelet count 150 to 450,000 could have given platelets 600,000. That's why platelets is wrong. Platelets would be high, if anything, never low in polysemia vera. So you say, well, what about the... Uh, dizziness and headache, well, this is going to be hyperviscosity syndrome, okay? This is due to high hemoglobin. You can also get Raynaud phenomenon as part of hyperviscosity syndrome. It's not limited to Crest syndrome. Splenomegaly, uh, nonspecific element. It could be hepatosplenomegaly by all means. Vitals are within normal limits. This is notable. We don't have a fever, okay? So we could be thinking about leukemoid reaction in the setting of a high white blood cell count here as, as just something to consider, okay? Because leukocyte ALP is elevated in both polycythemia vera as well as leukemoid reaction. Leukemoid reaction is when we have an infection causing an immunologic response that leads to increased leukocyte release from the bone marrow reserve pool. OID means OID means looks like but ain't. So leukemoid reaction looks like leukemia, but it's not leukemia, okay? Because your white blood cells super fucking elevated, 30, 50,000 or higher, okay? And you'd have a high leukocyte ALP in that case. As, is, as we have here with Pisces Mavera. Uh, Luxa ALP is low in chronic myelogenous leukemia. So uh, hemoglobin 20 grams per deciliter. So this is consistent with Pisces Mavera. And if we had secondary polycythemia, let's say, due to chronic lung disease, COPD, if we had renal cell carcinoma secreting EPO, we would only, we would have an isolated increase in red blood cells, okay? White blood cells would not be elevated, platelets would not be elevated. Now you say, well, what's going on with the red cell distribution with here? You should know, and if you've seen my prior clips here on the YouTube, this refers to iron deficiency anemia, usually on USMLE, if you have a high uh, RDW, okay? So let's say you get a question, you don't know what's going on, and they tell you RDW is normal. You can say, okay, not IDA, all right? So here it's increased, but... We're not worried about iron deficiency anemia as a potential distractor, okay? It's nothing really to consider, but you could be aware, and clearly our MCV is normal, but you could be aware that RDW, if it's high, usually refers to iron deficiency anemia, okay, but can also be elevated in polysemia of error. Pulse oximetry, 94%. This is because it's harder to saturate red blood cells when you simply have more of them, okay? So... Uh, this is a normal finding in polycythemia vera, 93%, 94%. That's fine. If they want secondary polycythemia due to low oxygen tension, they'll give it to you in the 80s. Okay, it's just, it's simply harder to saturate more RBCs. But don't get confused about this 94% or 93% when you see it in a question of polycythemia vera. There's no lung disease here. So just real quick, glucose wouldn't change in polycythemia vera. Hemoglobin A2, exceedingly high yield for beta thalassemia and USMLE. So if you get a question where they give you low MCV, low hemoglobin, sounds like iron deficiency anemia maybe, and then you do 
You check serum iron and ferritin, they're both normal. That's thalassemia until proven otherwise. You're going to do a hemoglobin electrophoresis as the next best step. If you see increased hemoglobin A2 and HBF, a, uh, hemoglobin A2 is alpha 2, delta 2. So if you see increased HBA2 and HBF, that's beta thalassemia. If it's normal, that's going to be one or two mutations for alpha thalassemia. Okay, so there's a lot we can talk about here, but you, I'd say another uh, key point that we'll finish on is U.S. Similarly wants the treatment for polycythemia vera as serial phlebotomy, okay? Uh, hydroxyurea can sometimes be used in polycythemia, exceedingly low yield on U.S. Similarly. They want serial phlebotomy as the answer for what to do in the setting of uh, hyperviscosity syndrome. They ask you how to best uh, decrease the headache in this patient or mitigate slash attenuate the headache in this patient, uh, you would do phlebotomy as the answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.